Valley Talk on News Talk 1580 KGAL. And this is Valley Talk, and a very good morning. I'm Dave Adams. Welcome to Monday. It is, uh, we'll get towards the mid part of December. Hope your holiday season, your Christmas season is going well. Hope you had a great weekend. A uh, little bit of rain outside today, keeping things lush and green and beautiful as they are here in the mid Willamette Valley. So glad you're with us today. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk. Again, a very big thank you to our good friends at Quiznos for uh, being a partner with us here on Valley Talk. And we give away every show a $10 gift certificate for your choice of sub sandwiches, chips, drinks. And uh, what you do to enter that is you just send me an email at dave at kgal.com or call the radio station and um, 926 kgal or 451 kgal and ask to be put on the end of the drawing for today's uh, Quiznos Taste on Us. And if we draw your name out at the end of the show, uh, we will call you, contact you via email, and say you won, ask for an address to send the certificate to, and you get a $10 certificate for Quiznos in Albany, the Albany location only. That's right next to Novak's Restaurant and also next to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location. And uh, good luck with that. So thank you for being with us on Valley Talk, and thanks to Dell and the crew for being a big part of Valley Talk here on Gal Radio. I'm Dave Adams, and in the studio with us today we have... Uh, Going to keep uh, the, the, the theme of the show today, Len Benton Community College. And we have Dale Stowell, who is Executive Director of Institutional Advancement and Foundation. Dale, thank you for being with us on Valley Talk. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And we'll kind of decipher what your title means and exactly what you do at LBCC. And also, we also have Heather Hill, who is the owner and director of Legacy Ballet. Heather, thank you for being with us on Valley Talk. Good morning. Nutcracker is going to be performed December 13th through the 15th at the Russell Trip Performance Center, and that's in combination with LBCC. So Heather will be talking to us chiefly during the last part of the show, talking about the Nutcracker, her experience, maybe what she does at Legacy Ballet, and that's what we're having on the show today. If you'd like to be involved, you can do so by email. You can uh, send me an email to dave at kgal.com, dave at kgal.com, com. And don't forget, that's also the same address that you can send an email entry to for Quiznos Taste on Us. So, welcome to the show. Dale, we were talking before you came on the program as we were booking you for the show about enrollment numbers. What do enrollment numbers look, specifically at LBCC? Are they going down? And then I understand, though, new enrollment numbers that the numbers of new students newly enrolling to Lynn Benton Community College is increasing. Yeah, that's true. I mean, our our enrollment uh, this fall compared to last fall is down five uh, percent, and uh, um, but our new our new student enrollment is is up considerably. Um, it, Lynn Benton Community College uh, is coming off of its two largest graduating classes ever uh, in its la the last two Junes, uh, so. Uh, our our returning student pool is actually down about 25 percent. Uh, you know, fortunately, over the summer we were able to make some adjustments to our schedule to add more classes for first year students and fewer classes for second year students because our student population mix had changed, and uh, um, our 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 current enrollment is down five percent. So the returning students aren't coming back in as great of numbers. Why is that? Do we know? Uh, yeah, because there are about 30% fewer of them. Um, the uh, uh, We had about uh, uh, 6,000 returning students uh, the summer, the fall before last, so fall of 2011. Uh, and we had uh, only a little more than, than 4,000 uh, the, this past fall. And... Uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons is um, we we have graduated uh, just many more students. Um, we had a graduating class of, of more than 900, uh, our 2011 class, and, and last year it was just shy of 900. But uh, that's 1,700 of our students uh, completing their degrees and certificates, uh, transferring or, or moving into the workforce. And uh, it it simply depleted the number of returning students we have. We just, uh, people have gotten finished, which is good. It's it, that That is becoming uh, a focus um, of Lynn Benton Community College, is helping people to, to finish what they start. But the number of new students coming on is increasing substantially. It is. And, and where, where are those coming from? 
Uh, again, it's it's uh, it's possible that it's pent up demand. Um, our 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 schedules uh, in, in terms of enrollment have been uh, close to a hundred percent for the last couple of years, um, and and we built a schedule to, to to serve the students that we had, and that was many more uh, 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 returning students. As we expand the available classes for first year students, um, obviously more people are able to get in. I mean, we we're coming from a couple of years where our. Uh, uh, a typical enrollment cycle looks like a lot of classes with big long waiting lists and uh, uh, that that has begun to change but again it's it's student mix first year to, to first year instead of second year are we seeing a lot now community college historically have been a place for people in the community as the name implies to come in and get uh, education increase their skill set that is becoming even more critical now as a lot of people are being laid off of jobs, having to retool and possibly looking into the career field. Is that part of where we're seeing the increased number from? Well, historically, community colleges and Lynn Benton is, is like many community colleges. There's this, this inverse relationship between what's going on in the economy and our enrollment. And uh, sadly, the worse the economy, the better the enrollment. Uh, for exactly the reason that you cite, as 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 people have um, either more time to get more training because perhaps they're working part time or perhaps they're laid off, uh, they come back to school. This becomes the, their opportunity to, uh, to 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 build their skills so that they can move forward in 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 whatever field that they're in. And and in some cases, uh, you are right. It is it is completely retooling. It's uh, it's learning how to become uh, a a medical professional. Um, um, instead of a factory worker, uh, so um, as as the uh, you know, we're it's always hard to tell. But I mean, there's there's a part of me that hopes that at least a little bit of this enrollment drop is a foreshadowing that the economy is getting better and that uh, more people are working. I um, mean, at least part time. In fact, if you re actually look at raw numbers, our our headcount is really not down so much as our FTE. What we have are more part-time students and fewer full-time students and I mean it's anybody's guess exactly why that happens but if people have a, a, the opportunity to work part-time and go to school part-time certainly could be one of the explanations what kind of classes are popular are we seeing retooling classes or is it the basic uh, getting the foundational courses to go into a four-year institution what what are we seeing very popular out there now you know at Lynn Benton Community College the 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 program mix is very balanced, so um, we're we're very balanced between you know what you would call you know university transfer courses. Mm -hmm. So these are people that that uh, you know their their ultimate goal is a, a four year degree, and they're planning to transfer to OSU or U of O, Portland State, any of the any of the four year public or private schools. Um, but the other half of our programs really are. Uh, you know what we would call career and technical education. So things like auto mechanics, uh, nursing, uh, respiratory technology, uh, polysomnography. I just had to try to say that because you know sleep technicians. So people who work in sleep labs and 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 help you know you determine why you can't get a good night's sleep. So we're we're about half and half. It's very we have a very balanced program between transfer and career technical education. Can you take another shot at that? What was that <laughs> word again? Polysomnography. Polysomnography. I, you know, I didn't know whether I was going to be able to say it right the first time, so I just I had to give it a shot. I didn't know that there was such a such a field. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's it's a relatively new program at, at Lynn Benton. As a matter of fact, there is a polysomnography lab right down here on uh, Pacific Boulevard that uh, Good Samaritan runs. Wow, and if you're having sleep apnea is one of the big concerns that a lot of people have. Exactly. That, 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 what do they call them, CPAP machines. That's right. I mean, any form of insomnia, mm -hmm. a polysomnography technician is the uh, person who uh, w is, is monitoring your sleep and uh, helping collect the data to help you determine how to get a better night's sleep. Interesting. Go to the doctor's office and take a nap. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so other than polysomnography, what... Let's talk about the part-time students and what courses are we seeing a lot of auto mechanics? Are we seeing sales courses? What what are we seeing that are really piquing the interest? I would assume that health field. There's always been a real good demand in the health field industry. I've, I know we're probably waiting to see what the Obamacare plan does 
as far as that. Everything is up in the air right now. It would seem to me, let me preface the question with this. For, for institutions that are trying to, to, to gear up to provide teaching and ed educational programs to teach the workforce what's coming into the future when nobody really knows kind of what's coming on in the future, it would seem difficult. Well, let me give you an example of one program. Um, so, our auto diesel programs. Okay. Um, they're extremely popular. They, they typically have um, waiting lists. So, one of the things that we... Even still. Even still, right? Those, those, they're, they're, they're programs that, that not everybody who wants to get into them can. Um, we've been um, involved in a project over the last several years and, and really began to get busy on it uh, this year to develop uh, what we're calling an Advanced Transportation Technology Center. Now, this is a, this is a center that will be uh, located in uh, Lebanon. Um, we found a, a piece of land with uh, an existing building on it, which uh, significantly reduces the cost of developing the facility that will allow us both to expand our auto and diesel programs to, to, to allow more students in and also add a component um, where we teach the uh, p people in the program how to work on alternative fuel vehicles. So, you know, these are, you know, electric hybrids, hydrogen right. cell, fuel cell, propane, natural gas, uh, you name it. And um, if all goes well, we should have that uh, up and running by uh, uh, December 2014, so it, the, the, the time frame is, is fairly aggressive. Uh, we've done a good job of uh, procuring a lot of financial support for it, and uh, it's one of the things where we look at a program that has a waiting list, and, and we respond. On that particular program, the Advanced Transportation Technology Center, a waiting list for it yet? A lot of interest, uh, queries from the public? What's the, what's the feeling out there? Well, we know we have a lot of interest in our auto diesel programs. Uh, you know, it's... it's uh, Maybe not surprising, where we've had the most interest is uh, among industry um, and um, transportation companies that uh, if they had the technicians to, say, work on a compressed natural gas ve uh, vehicle, uh, they could save hundreds of thousands of dollars a year by converting over. I mean, the, the technology is there right now, but what we don't have is the infrastructure. So if I have a trucking company and I want to convert my diesel trucks into you know, what's called dual fuel, so it runs off compressed natural gas mm -hmm. and, and diesel, uh, I don't have anybody to work on it. So if, if something breaks, I don't have anybody to fix it. it so I can't do it. But the, the cost savings are, are enormous. So we've had, we've had great interest and, and support from uh, uh, businesses you know, who are, are, are definitely excited about the prospect of having trained technicians in this area. What about the health sector? The health sector has always been a good area of employment, like, for example, in diesel mechanics. We're going to be transporting whatever happens. We've always got to transport food, fuel, people on the highways. And so somebody's got to work on the trucks. Good career field to get into. Health. People are always going to get sick, and there's always going to have to be somebody there to take care of them. That's a good field to get into. What's the interest in health, to, um, health field centers, especially with partnering with the uh, health complex over there in Lebanon? You know, we're, we're still working to, to, to really totally develop our partnerships in the health field, but you're absolutely right. Uh, it's an it's a area that uh, um, where there will always, you know, be a, a good job prospects because as the population grows older, uh, I'm afraid it's just uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm thinking of myself even as, as I as I get up there in years I, I'm a, I am a higher user of, of, of health care services and and our population is aging so they are very popular programs they, they are other programs that's another program where we have uh, we still have wait lists any new programs coming up we've talked about the advanced technology transportation center we've talked a bit about health care anything new in the wings that you can tell us about you know the you know, advanced transportation uh, technology is, is 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 probably our main focus at the, at this point. Um, you're just trying to, to 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 get the rest of the funding for that. Uh, this year alone, we've been able to to secure uh, 4.3 million of the uh, of the 6.5 million needed. So we're we're well on our way to that. Uh, the college received uh, its largest private donation of two million dollars uh, about uh, three months ago. Um, to, to help support the center, and, and we've just gotten tre tremendous support uh, all the way along the boards. 
Now, one of the things that I always like to do is man on the street or people on the street interviews and see what people out there are wanting to talk about. In, in this case, uh, 10 classes at LBCC. So Heather Hill is with us in the studio today. Heather is the owner and director of Legacy Ballet. Uh, Heather, if you were going to Len Benton Community College, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here. Just okay. A consumer query, I guess we can call it. What kind of courses would you be interested in at LBCC? Actually, I did go to LBCC, and I have my Associate of Arts degree from LBCC. Um, I also worked for six years in the medical field, and so I also had taken a bunch of their medical courses, medical terminology, et cetera, things like that. But now you're an owner of a ballet company. Yes. So you went from health technology to ballet. Yes. Interesting transfer there. Yes. Well, I um, actually started dancing when I was eight years old and um, aging myself. I'm 38 years old now. But working in the medical field, I realized that it was, it was a great job. I loved it. There was a lot of job security to it, but it's not what I wanted to be doing. I want to I wanna love my work. And um, I do. I love dancing, and I, I love my job. It's, it's fun going to work. You know what they say. I don't know who said this, but I think it's a good uh, piece of information. Do what you love, and the money will follow. Yes. Yes. Dale, would you agree with that statement? You know, I absolutely Up would. And, and, and I, I have to say, I, I'm also an alum of LBCC. So uh, coming back here uh, in uh, January is, uh, is sort of uh, a homecoming. And, you know, one of the reasons that I've, I've spent most of my career uh, working to promote community colleges is the experience that I had at Lynn Benton Community College. Uh, it's one of the things that brings, you know, being back here in my home community, you know, at my, at one of my old schools, uh, is something that brings great meaning to my work. And, and I do love what I do. And, and, uh, what Lynn Benton did for me is, is one of the big reasons for that. Dale Stowell with uh, Lynn Benton Community College, and also we have Heather Hill, the owner and director of uh, the Legacy Ballet. We're going to be talking about the Nutcracker, which is going to be performed December 13th through the 15th. We'll have times and places, and of course it will be performed at LBCC. We'll be talking about that uh, as we get into Valley Talk a little bit more. Don't forget to sign up for Quiznos Taste on Us. You can send me an email, dave at kgal.com, or you can call the station at 451-KGAL or 926-KGAL. Say you want to be put into the Quiznos drawing today. Now, the $10 gift certificate is good at the Quiznos Albany location next to Novak's Restaurant and next also to the former G.I. Joe Sporting Goods location. Big thank you to Dale and the crew for doing such a tasty lunch, and that's why we call it Taste on Us. So get in your entries, and we'll see if we can make you a winner here on KGAL's Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams, and this program will continue in a moment. The Customs of Christmas. One of our most beloved customs of Christmas was created in one short evening and will never die. That story in a moment. This is Greg Rowe, Executive Director of the United Way of Lincoln County. For many people, an important custom of Christmas is lending a helping hand to your neighbors and friends in need with a donation to the United Way. At holiday time and year-round, the United Way and its 21 nonprofit partner agencies are helping change lives for the better. Go to our website, unitedwayoflincounty.org, and discover how you can help change lives. Give, advocate, volunteer. Live United. One of our cherished customs of Christmas was created in one inspired evening. Father Joseph Moore was assistant pastor of the church in Oberndorf, Austria. Franz Gruber was church organist. Just before Christmas in 1818, Father Moore was called out to bless a newborn baby. As he returned home through the snow, he was deeply moved by the serenity of the scene around him. Back home, he quickly wrote the poem, then hurried to Franz Gruber for a melody. And within an hour, it was done. And at the Christmas service in 1818, with Father Moore accompanying on his guitar, Silent Night was introduced to the world. To this day, it remains an irreplaceable custom of Christmas. Tis the season and time for planning holiday parties and memorable company celebrations. Be sure to include Mama's Fine Italian in your plans. Have the party at Mama's in Lebanon or book them to cater your event. Either way, it will be superb and your guests will love it. Need a special bottle of wine for dinner tonight or for a party hostess gift? 
No better place or price than Mama's incomparable wine shop. Close Sunday and Monday, so make the most of the other five days and join your friends at Mama's. Like them on Facebook or contact them through their website, mamasfineitalian.com. Call for reservations or to plan your holiday party. 541-451-5050. That's 451-5050. Mama's Fine Italian and Wine Shop on West Oak between Main and 2nd in Lebanon. Across from the Big Blue Napa Auto Parts building. It's a seasoned tradition known the world over. The Nutcracker. The whole family is invited to see The Nutcracker presented by the Legacy Ballet and the Russell Tripp Performance Center at the Lynn Benton Community College this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. with a 2 p.m. matinee for the 15th. Tickets are $12 and are available online at lynnbenton.edu forward slash Russell Tripp Theater or at the door. Don't miss Albany's Legacy Ballet's The Nutcracker. It's a must for the season. Health Talk with Dr. Bob Martin, Sunday mornings on News Talk 1580, KGAL. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Time is 1127, and glad you're with us today on this Monday. We're talking about Lynn Benton Community College today, and in the studio we have Dale Stowell, who is the exec is executive director of the Institutional Advancement and Foundation, which is a mouthful at uh, LBCC, and also Heather Hill, who is the owner and director of Legacy Ballet. We're going to be talking to Heather in just a moment about the Nutcracker. That's going to be December 13th and the 15th, uh, 7 p.m., all three of those nights, and then there's a 2 p.m. performance on Saturday the 15th, I believe. Correct. So we'll be talking to Heather uh, at length here in just a few minutes about the Nutcracker and what we can expect. One of the things that's really nice about living in the mid Willamette Valley is there's a lot of of, uh, I guess we call it fine arts, a lot of uh, musical productions, community concerts, uh, so on and so forth, ensembles. I just love the music and the, the theater over here. Uh, it's just great. So, Dale, let's talk about the changing roles of community colleges. Uh, one of the things that we were talking about during the break, we've kind of alluded to it earlier in the show, is the changing, is the new normal. We hear that used a lot. Uh, we really kind of don't know where we're headed in the economy. What does the future look like? So you're telling me that community colleges are changing their focus to be very much keyed and critically aimed at producing graduates that can get employed and stay employed. You're focusing on more of the goal. Not that you didn't in the past, but that's very integral now. Instead of just recruiting students to come to college, community college, teaching them read and write and arithmetic, throw them out there and think that they'll get a job. You're much more uh, results focused now, aren't you? We're, we're transforming ourselves as we speak. And it's, it's, it's very important to, to note that historically, um, you know, community colleges, the mission was about educational access. So in other words, we were, you know, sometimes with community college, you often heard the term open door, which means that people could come in, they could take classes. And I think that, uh, you know, completion was assumed um, and, um, and not necessarily focused on. And that's really what's changing. Uh, and, it, and it's changing from, you know, the, the ground level. You know, we recently... Uh, changed our mission statement to, to, to make sure that everyone knows that, that we're not just focused on the education that's going on in the classroom on any given day. We're focused on the students' success um, through Linda Benton Community College and when they enter the community. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's actually a short enough mission statement. So like the first time ever that I can actually remember a community college mission statement is to engage in an education that enables us all to contribute to, uh, benefit from, and participate in the economic vitality and cultural richness of our community. So it, it, it not only focuses on the engagement of the education, but on the contribution, uh, the participation, and the benefit um, once uh, we're gone, uh, once, once you're, gr you're graduated from, from Lynn Benton. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the first step that, that we've taken is... Um, uh, j this fall, we instituted something called destination graduation. So, uh, 
you know, I think in, in the past we've gotten students in and we've assumed that they knew everything that they would need to know. Well, um, Destination Graduation is a program that uh, it's, a, it's a required course for our, our first uh, year students. Uh, and it helps them um, understand uh, where all of the support services are on campus. Uh, it connects them with an advisor. Every one of our new students and uh, from here on out will have connection, you know, to their own personal advisor uh, who they'll, they'll be able to, to discuss, uh, you know, issues with, receive guidance from each term. Um, just so that we can help people you know, make it through in a efficient and effective way. And uh, as I said, fall quarter was our first, uh, was our first, uh, was the launch. Um, we'll get to see uh, in, in winter quarter if we've been able to have an effect on our fall to winter retention. You know, it's another hallmark of what we're doing is we're going to measure things. We're going to measure to see we did this, did it have the effect that we, that we intended? And if not, what do we do to make it better? And, and that is across the board at Lynn Benton. We're becoming much more, you know, intentional about making sure that what we're doing works for students in the community. What kind of follow-up is done after the student leaves Lynn Benton Community College and goes into the workforce? Do you phone call follow-up? Do you talk to employers? What do you do to gauge our, our uh, graduates being a productive member of society and producing the economy? One of the things that we have in place now is uh, we have advisory committees for every single um, uh, career and technical education program at the college. And these are made up of the employers of our graduates. So these are representatives from the companies that, that hire uh, the people who graduate from our programs. So that becomes a, a, a good feedback loop, um, in both in terms of making sure that our programs have what employers are looking for to begin with and getting feedback on how our graduates are performing once they get into the workforce. So um, we'll be looking to, 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 to have you know, other evaluation methods as well, but I mean, we already have a good head start in that realm with our advisory committees. Looking and overseeing education in Oregon is changing. The governor is having more of an input and more direct control over making decisions governing education. Do we know yet how community colleges fit into the grand scheme of things as far as the overall review of education in Oregon and where we're headed in the future? It's kind of a broad question. Yeah, I mean, w you know, we certainly know the 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 direction that the that the governor is headed, and 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 I, it's safe to say that at Lynn Benton Community College, we 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 support the uh, uh, m most of what the governor is 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 promoting. I mean. Um, you know, for for instance, uh, funding. I think I mentioned that you know access is the has been you know getting people through the door, and that's how we've been funded. So basically, community colleges um, are funded for the number of people who are enrolled. FTE. FTE. Exactly. So that means full time equivalency. That's right. So. Um, the governor is, is shifting the focus, so his proposal, and obviously it's kind of too early to tell exactly what it's going to be because it'll go through a legislative process and we'll see, see where it ends up. But his initial proposal is that uh, um, the, the transition would be that 70% of our funding would be um, uh, based on what it's always been based on, FTE, but that 30% would, would have to do with students hitting uh, benchmark numbers that show uh, a progression towards a goal and, uh, and of course, graduation or transfer, if that's what their goal is. Some students who come to us as transfer students don't necessarily care whether they get an associate's degree. Um, we encourage them to do it because there are statistics that show that students who do uh, um, are more successful, but they don't necessarily do it. So, um, you know, the, the, the actual completion also is a big part of the funding. So 30% of that would be completion focused, 70% would be where it is now. And then over time, the, the um, outcomes focused, if you want to call it outcomes funding, would, would gradually uh, increase. What would you say, I just thought of this while we were discussing this, what would you say to folks 
who are trying to scale back on the amount of overall expenditures on public services of all kind, education, everything. Um, and they might say, why do we need community colleges as a different organization? Why can't we just have high school and then they go on to college and have Oregon State and University of Oregon pick up some of the courses that uh, community colleges are doing and, you know, cut back in that area? What Explain to the critics who say, why do we have community colleges and, and Oregon State University of Oregon? Why can't we just do it all in one place? Well, you know, our, our approach uh, at community colleges is, it's, it's a little different. And I, and I mean, you know, and I, I would, I would uh, I'd tell a personal story just to illustrate that. Uh, you know, I graduated from Philomath High School in a, in a day and age when my graduating class had 69 people in it. Mm-hmm. So... Um, uh, and starting at, at LBCC, where, uh, and LBCC obviously was a, even back in the day, was a considerably larger institution than Flomath High School. Um, you, my class size looked roughly wh- uh, about what it looked like in high school. I mean, you know, I had kind of the same level of support. Uh, you know, I eventually transferred to Portland State, um, but I, I I really realized that that if I had started, you know, with my background, even though I was a great student, if I had started at an OSU or a U of O or a Portland State, um, I probably would have gotten eaten up and spitting out uh, just because uh, of the level of support that I needed. So we really we really provide you know sort of a, a, a community uh, focused um, option uh, for you know students who. Um, uh, you know, want a personalized educational experience. You know, obviously what a community college cannot offer is sort of the residential experience Mm -hmm. of a four-year university. Um, But in terms of getting the classes and getting them efficiently, I mean, our, our tuition is still, you know, and our you know, cost per student is still roughly about half of what a four-year university is. Uh, you know, it's a very efficient way of of getting those first two years, um, as opposed to a four-year university, which has a much broader mission. That their their mission is still completely valid. Um, the but it's a it is a very efficient option, a very cost efficient, effective option for both um, the student and the taxpayer. To, to, to get that education if the other parts of the university experience are not as important. Heather, I'd like you to follow up on that. You were nodding in agreement with that as far yes. as it's a good way to transition from high school, where, as uh, Dale was saying, that if he just went from high school to an Oregon State or U of O, he would have just got uh, chewed up and spit out. Um, you agree with that? I do. I think the student-to-teacher ratio... Um, there's such a difference between a community college classroom and a university college classroom. So, I mean, even as, you know, a a student, why not sit in a classroom that has the, you know, the least amount of students in there and can feel like you're getting more personal attention from your instructor um, than in a classroom with, you know, 200 students in there. Mm, good point. I, I've used this example before. I was in a high school. I won't mention the city because I don't want to embarrass them. But the, <laughs> the, the high school in the math class I was in, in we had 90 students in the one math class. There was four, four teachers that rotated and you rotated in. It was the new way to teach algebra. And uh, I just got lost in the shuffle. You know, 90 kids, if you didn't catch it, you were lost. And so I got D's all through my high school in algebra. And part of it was, it just didn't make sense. And I was one of 90 students. And the class size is really, really important. And when, when student institutions talk about class size and ratio of students for teachers, uh, I always think about that experience. And as a student, you know, I was just in survival mode and just float through with a D and go through, but uh, did I really learn it, and what was the quality of my education? Uh, in this case, wasn't too good. Well, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of research out there to back you up. I mean, you know, uh, you know, one of the one of the real indicators uh, of of student success is the ability uh, uh, to have relationships with your instructors with somebody on campus. So, if you know your instructor. 
um, you know, if, if, the, if the environment is, is small enough or structured in a way that allows that to happen, uh, your chances of, of being a successful student increase immeasurably. I mean, and that really was my experience at LBCC. I had an advisor who I saw almost every day. And when I messed up, as, you know, an 18-year-old kid invariably does, there was somebody who, who knew enough about me to uh, tell and, and help get me back on the, on the right track. So, you know, the, uh, the, the ability to have personal relationships is really uh, one of the, you know, one of the, the hallmarks of community colleges. And one of the things, really, with destination graduation that we're really trying to accomplish. Okay. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Heather Hill next, the owner and director of Legacy Ballet, about the Nutcracker. Of course, it is December. It is Christmas season. It is time to start celebrating. We'll talk more, more about arts and some of the Christmas celebrations coming along, and one of those is Nutcracker, December 13th and 15th. When we come back from the break, we'll talk to Heather in just a moment. I'm Dave Adams. This is Valley Talk. We'll be right back. The Osgood File, sponsored in part by Auto Owners Insurance. For no problem, people, visit autoowners.com. This is Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Can you get energy out of water? I'm not talking about hydroelectric power from the motion of water in waterfalls and water mills and dams. I'm talking about energy from wastewater, the stuff that goes down the bathtub drain or flushed down the toilet or that you wash the dishes with. Well, there is now a high-rise office block in Paris that's using its own such waste to grow algae and treating it in flat panel bioreactors on the building's facade that both clean up the water and produce significant amounts of usable energy to produce heat and light. We'll meet the people behind that after this. In this moment, who has your back? Do you know the name of your insurance agent? Does your agent know your name? Or would you call a 1-800 number that connects you with who? Another state? Another country? Get a local, independent insurance agent with auto owner's insurance. Someone you can call when bad stuff happens to your car, home, or business. In this moment, get an agent who will protect you in that moment. Auto owner's insurance. The no problem, people. In Martinsville, call BB&T Insurance Services of Martinsville at 276-666-3600. Running a facility, chances are managing inventory isn't your favorite part of the day. Stocking and tracking, ordering and organizing, all necessary evils eating up your time. That's why Granger's Keep Stock services help you manage your inventory more efficiently, from basic labeling and scanning to secure dispensing machines, putting you in total control, often allowing you to buy less, making things seem, well, not so evil anymore. Contact your Granger representative or visit Granger.com slash Keepstock today. Granger for the ones who get it done. The Paris building we were telling you about is using a system developed by an American company, Origin Oil, and the French firm Enesis, whose CEO is Pierre Tozna. Wastewater are full of nutrients. We prepare the wastewater in a way that phytoplankton, microalgae, will nourish themselves from everything that is inside this wastewater. What you will have is biomass made of phytoplankton that has grown in 24 to 48 hours and you will have pure water. Good thing too, says Origin Oil CEO Rick Eckleberry, because France's sustainable energy law now requires something of the sort. So builders throughout France now have to show more energy coming out of a building than is going in and they have to clean the sewage water. These are big challenges. Algae is a perfect solution for both generating energy and cleaning up the sewage water. Who would have thought? The Osgood File. Transcripts, podcasts, and MP3s of these programs can be found at theosgoodfile.com. I'm Charles Osgood on the CBS Radio Network. Cascade Sound and Stage Lighting is celebrating 42 years of providing quality services to the Northwest. Quality makes the difference. Production, installation, sales, rentals, repairs. Your holiday one-stop shop for any event that requires sound equipment. Holiday parties, concerts, fairs, corporate meetings, festivals, top-of-the-line DJ equipment on sale now just in time for the holidays. Call Cascade Sound at 800-632-5525. 632-5525. Where satisfaction is guaranteed and quality makes the difference. Online at CascadeSound.com. Like them on Facebook. 
It's a common complaint. People who are physically fit and at a stable weight still have bulges, rolls, and other small areas of fat that they can't get rid of, no matter how much they exercise or diet. Spot reducing fat through diet and exercise is practically impossible for many of us. Men and women alike face the frustrating truth every day. A muffin top, love handles, back fat, not much, but just enough to show through a snug fitting t-shirt or blouse. These small areas of fat don't seem to warrant surgical procedure, but they're tempted. What else can they do? Now at Silver Falls Dermatology, you can attack these problem areas with the non-invasive Cool Sculpting Procedure. Cool Sculpting utilizes a precisely controlled method to target, cool, and eliminate fat cells without damage to other tissue. Call Silver Falls Dermatology for an appointment at 866-599-DERM. That's 866-599-DERM. Or visit silverfallsderm.net. Radio for the Mid Valley's Horse Lovers, The Horse Show with Rick Lamb, Sunday mornings at 9 on Smart Talk 1580. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Glad you're with us today. 1146 is the time. And as promised, Heather Hill, the owner and director of Legacy Ballet, is with us in the studios. Heather, uh, glad to have you with us today. Good morning. The Nutcracker. We were joking during the commercial break about... If let's say you're a Jeff Foxworthy fan and you're a redneck and so on and so forth and and uh, you're not really let's shall we say indoctrinated to the arts, what is the Nutcracker? The Nutcracker is a story of uh, a girl who is given a present, which is a Nutcracker doll, and as she uh, falls asleep. She dreams a wild, crazy dream, and um, basically the ballet is all about what happens in the dream. Um, it's an exciting fight story in there with a mouse king, played by my husband. And how appropriate. <laughs> and how uh, they get through the battle and um, what happens after that. What would you say to convince people who may not have ever gone to a ballet in their life? who chuckle and sneer and 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 uh, I guess we're talking to the redneck or the or the the machismo guy out there who says I'm not going to a ballet uh, what would you say to them to encourage them to partake I would say that um, I I feel everyone needs to experience theater um, what takes place on the stage is is magical whether it's dance or um, you know any any of the performing arts it's magical what happens there it's live um, people still you know can meet and sit side by side and partake in what's happening on stage um, and it gets them out of the house it gets them away from the television off of Facebook and um, you know actually communicating and, and back to real life unplug from technology and yes. plug into real life good point we were talking about budgets in a moment ago, and one of the things we talked about also during the break was, uh, Heather, if you were, if there are people listening that may be members of budget committees and school boards or state legislators or whatever, and they're saying, well, we really don't have as much money as we used to, and they consider arts to be frills, what would you say to them to encourage them that it continues to be a high priority in budgeting? Why should we keep the arts? I really am a believer that the performing arts is a vital part of our community. Um, I mean, if you were to, to take a look at Eugene and the Holt Center, it's it's just amazing what cities can do that have these, you know, large theaters um, and production after production where families can just, you know, either participate in the productions or be watching the productions. Um, performing arts is very important in schools. It gives children who maybe don't want to partake in sports another option for an activity. Um, you know, find their passion in life. Is it singing? Is it dancing? Is it acting? Um, it brings visitors to your city to partake in the restaurants, etc., that are around town. And it really shows... Uh, what your community is about. Uh, before we forget, let's talk about the Nutcracker dates, times, where they buy tickets, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, opening night is December 13th, and we have a 7 p.m. performance that evening. Also, December 14th, 7 p.m., and December 15th, we have a 2 p.m. and a 7 p.m. Tickets are available online at lynnbenton.edu forward slash go forward slash tickets. 
and they're $12 a piece. Is this a fundraiser for anything? Um, it actually is in partnership. This production is in partnership with Lynn Benton Community College and the Russell Tripp Performance Center. Um, I believe this partnership was created because we both see the importance of the performing arts here in Albany. Um, this is actually Albany's very first full-length Nutcracker. There has never been a Nutcracker in Albany before. This is the first? This is the first. So this is a debut for Albany. This is an and historical occasion. It is. It's very, very uh, important event. And so um, with this partnership, Lynn Benton Community College has really taken a huge part in this first year of helping us um, get this established. It's not just a legacy ballet or just a Lynn Benton Community College event. It's, it's a community event. Every year the auditions are going to be open to all local dancers. Um, I am the choreographer and the director, but I want to see dancers from everywhere come and partake in this event. We have dancers from ages 6 all the way through adult, and we have um, adults who don't dance that are in the production as well. So. so what does this mean to you personally? This is the first full-length performance of the Nutcracker Suite yes. in Albany, and you're the director. Yes. What does this mean to you? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, I've, um, I think once you've danced about every role you can dance in a Nutcracker, um, the next step is to choreograph and direct your own. And so it's exciting. Um, we had a Chicago um, scenic artist who came into town and for a month she painted our backdrops and to see them you know, go from a, an 11 by 14 piece of paper to this huge backdrop that's hung on the stage, it's absolutely amazing. It just gives you chills. There's a sugar plum fairy ball that as we're trying to culturally re-indoctrinate people and especially the young kids, uh, you mentioned laughingly that uh, a lot of young people, their first introduction to the Nutcracker is the Barbie Nutcracker. And yes. that's not uh, the full meal deal, so to speak. Yes. When I uh, ask the, the question in this, this, during the season, I'll ask, you know, who's, who's watched the Nutcracker? And a lot of them say, oh, I have the Barbie Nutcracker movie. And I just shake my head because it's, it's not the Nutcracker. I mean, it, you know, that's, if that's their first experience about it, they need to come and, and watch it live on stage because it's a, it's a very different story. We're talking to Heather Hill, owner and director of Legacy Ballet. More with her and some final comments with Dale Stowell of uh, Lynn Benton Community College when we continue with Valley Talk in just a moment as we take our final break. When you look out across the Willamette Valley, you'll see plenty of banking choices. Willamette Community Bank is here to give you an option that's pretty unique. Like no other, in fact, Willamette Community Bank provides an alternative to large national and regional banks by offering customized financial services and local decision making to benefit local people, local families, and local businesses. How many banks can say that? Willamette Community Bank. Service like no other. We promise. Member FDIC. Introducing a faster way to push to talk. AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk. AT&T delivers more of what your business needs. Instant communication, up to 1,000 contacts, plus a broad array of devices and platforms. Visit att.com slash enhanced PTT3 to get your business started with a free Samsung Rugby Pro. You push to talk, we pushed it further. AT&T, rethink possible. Limited time offer, free phone on new activations only. Requires two-year commitment to eligible voice and data plans, plus activation of AT&T Enhanced Push to Talk service. The Home Depot Project Loan is a simple way to put big projects within reach. You not only get no payments and no interest for six months, you also get the flexibility of paying it off any time. So whether it's new flooring or a whole new kitchen, the Project Loan makes it easy and we make it possible. Get started now. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. U.S. only, subject to credit approval, terms and conditions apply. See store for details. Beaver Nation, this is Oregon State basketball coach Craig Robinson. Starts now screens for Amada, comes around it in deep, pops fake, ball away, six footer, go! Basketball season is in full force. Do you have your tickets? Knocked away by Collier, Devon is ahead of the pack for the basket, and goal! Purchase your single game tickets today at beavertickets.com. This is Beaver Nation. MusicRewind.com presents The Cruisin' Story. Three CDs from the golden years of pop and rock. 
Wonder, 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 Seventy-five fantastic hits. Earth Angel, Earth Sam Cooke, the Everly Brothers, the Buddy Holly, the Shirelles, and so many more. Three CDs, 75 songs, all for only $19.98 plus shipping and processing. The Cruisin' Story is only $19.98. Order today at musicrewind.com or call 800-206-5002. Plus, reduce shipping on your order when you enter or mention coupon code STORY77. That's musicrewind.com or 800-206-5002. Beyond the Beltway with Bruce Dumont. Sunday afternoons on News Talk 1580 KGAL. This is Valley Talk, Dave Adams. I'm glad uh, that you're with us today. Heather Hill, the owner and director of Legacy Ballet, with us. Let's uh, give some people some uh, parting information about the Nutcracker. Uh, the Nutcracker is a holiday tradition, isn't it? Yes, it is. Is there a Christmas story wrapped around it? There is a Christmas story wrapped around it. The, the opening scene is actually a uh, Christmas party that is happening within the Stahlbaum home, family home. And being in the production and choreographing production, it really does feel like you're attending a Christmas party every night. <laughs> And again, dates and times for the Nutcracker and where they can get tickets. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, 7 p.m., and also a Saturday, 2 p.m. matinee. Tickets are available at lynnbenton.edu forward slash go forward slash tickets, and tickets are $12 a piece. And it's performed in combination with Lynn Benton Community College. Correct. Dale Stowell with us here from LBCC, Director of Institutional Advancement and Foundation. Dale, thank you for being with us on the show today. A couple things that we want to leave people with as we go are open enrollment. So if they're looking at enrolling, they need to that's Do right. Our, our open enrollment started this Saturday. So if you're a new student, uh, you, there's still time to, to get the process going and uh, get your classes. Fall qu uh, Winter quarter starts uh, January 7th. If you're a returning student, now is really the time to get your classes before they fill up. So, uh, uh, you know, check the website, www.lynnbenton.edu. Uh, the instructions that you need there and the connections you need to make are right there for you. So, uh, uh, time to go for enrollment. What about financial aid? If people are needing help, money, let's say they've lost a job, they want to retool, what's available out there? You know, the, 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 the best advice I can give is to stop by the financial aid office and, uh, you know, based on your situation, you can get the, the information that you need. Um, you know, one good reminder with the new year coming up, you know, particularly for anybody, for high school seniors, this is a good one. So if you know a high school senior or a high school senior, uh, January 1st, you can get the uh, FAFSA, which is the form that everybody fills out to uh, determine financial aid. Um, the sooner you fill it out, the sooner you will get your, you know, financial aid determination. Financial aid is one of the things that holds some people up. So taking care of it sooner than later is really the thing to do. And January 1st is the first day you can do it. And community colleges are important because... Because they serve the communities, uh, they provide an accessible uh, link to education and training, and uh, they help make the economies better. Um, $415 million of Lynn and Benton Community College's economy is attributable to the education provided over the years by Lynn Benton Community College. How many students are at LBCC? We have 22,000 students in any year. So that's about one out of every 10 uh, people in Lynn and Benton counties have some sort of class at LBCC. Dale Stowell, Executive Director of Institutional Advancement and Foundation at LBCC, and Heather Hill, Owner and Director of Legacy Ballet, in charge for the historical Nutcracker. First time we've ever had the full performance in uh, the uh, mid Willamette Valley. Thank you for being with us on Valley Talk today. Coming up tomorrow, Northwest Investment Manager Rex Watkins here on Valley Talk, along with John Gibson, our own investment guy. This is Valley Talk. I'm Dave Adams. Make it a great day. the Mid-Valley for over 50 years. You're listening to News Talk 1580 KGAL, Lebanon, Albany, Corvallis.